Hi, good evening to everyone. Thank you for joining me. I'm Dr. Philip McMillan, and I've been talking about COVID and the COVID-related pathology and science since 2020. This is over five years of research. And today I'm going to be going back to an important aspect of my journey, and it's to do with Gert van den Bosch. And I will share with you one of his more recent uh, publications on his Voice for Science and Sol Solidarity substack about Hivicron. And I'll share with you what he said on the 31st of uh, August, that's just a few days ago, and make some of my own thoughts about what I think this is going to present like, because he is anticipating a highly virulent strain of variant of Omicron, and um, I think he's right. The question is, how will we know? So I'm going to be using a little bit of data from Japan and sharing with you some insights from my research of the science. Before I start, I want to thank you all. I have no idea what happened in the past week, but suddenly I'm starting to get subscribers again. You may not have known this, but on YouTube, I was stuck at about 157 subscribers, and actually, I was losing subscribers month on month. And this is from about 10,000 subscribers per month that was being gained. I don't know what happened, but suddenly, it seems a few more of my videos are being seen. I'm very appreciative of it, but I suspect that there are strange things happening in the background, because the other thing I noticed was that my comments were switched off. If you noticed in the past few days, if you'd watched a video, you couldn't make a comment if it wasn't live. I don't know how it happened. Luckily, I think I've found a workaround so you can make comments again. It seems people don't want me to share this information with you. So if you are watching, please consider yourself one of the lucky ones to be able to get ahead, or well, not so much ahead, but in front pushing the science forward. So let's get back to an important point. With regards to this Omicron variant that is coming, based on what Gert predicts, and I think he's right, you need to be protected. And because of that, I have been talking continuously in the past about nitric oxide in the sinuses as an essential aspect of protecting your upper airways just by humming. And it was through that work of talking about humming that we, in the conjunction with Lumientia, produced Humming Heroes and really appreciated all the support. That book got to number one. And we've got here a link in the description for you to learn more about it. It really is a fascinating concept and you will get a free black and white version of it here you go, this is what it will look like. And as we take you through a few of the pages, you also have the option to get the full color version, which looks like this. Look at the incredible colors that are involved here. And so what will happen essentially is that if you get here some of the pages with the storyline, and again, the principle here is that you can always get the full color version and help to support this research as we continue to try and make progress. So this is what it would look like if you got the color version, and uh, that's the book or the, um, the Kindle. Please continue to support us as we continue with this fight to try and keep science at the forefront. So let's get back to the premise or the principles with regards to what Gert had been talking about. Here is his article about Hivikron. And if you've not heard about it, Hivicron means highly virulent Omicron descendant. So Hivicron. And he believes that this will shut down immune infl inflammation and silence the immune responses in these populations. That will ultimately allow the virus to come back stronger and more virulent. I can tell you that I think it is happening. But part of the problem is that it is silent. And I had to think carefully, what else could give us a similar kind of picture when we talk about silence? 
And as I was reflecting on the ideas and looking at different um, disease mechanisms, one of them is diabetic ketoacidosis, where the blood glucose is normal. So in type 1 diabetics, sometimes when they're on specific medications, they can be becoming more acidotic, meaning um, the acid is building up in their blood. Their blood sugars are normal until they just suddenly get sick. Very serious condition. Another example could be sepsis in somebody who is immune compromised. They literally look fine, and then in a few hours, they literally get completely unwell, low blood pressure, crashing everything, and it can be a very serious situation if they, if they survive it. So these are examples of what can happen or how you can see a presentation of what I think that GERT is looking for. Now, you have to remember that even though from a scientific point of view, there is a degree of ego in that we like to be right. But I can tell you from personally interacting with GERT is even though you have that, yes, I know I'm right, you hope you're wrong. Because what will happen is that the mortality is going to go through the roof. But I don't think this is going to happen suddenly. I'm going to give you an example as to how I think this is going to look. Someone mistakenly um, shared with me Japanese excess data, mortality data, um, to kind of say, well, look, there's nothing going on here. Why are you so worried? And I took one look at it and I thought, have they actually looked at these charts? Do they not see what is going on? So I'll share with you what's happening with regards to Japan. And this is a template, I think, for what will happen elsewhere. So this is taken from the excess and exogenous deaths dashboard in Japan. And what I want you to notice is the peaks between, this is 2017, 2018, 2019. Uh, these are about the same, okay? Interestingly, 2020 was a little bit lower. And this was because Japan had shut down its borders and they didn't really have too much exposure. But then you can see what happened in 2021 there. And this here, you can, you can see the peak here of 32,800. And then in 22, where you see a plus sign, it means there was excess death. And that time it was 35,143. Then you can see here, this is 2023. And at that time it was 39,054. So we can see this trend rising year on year with the peaks, excess deaths are going up. In 2023, for whatever reason, it, uh, 2024, sorry, it looks a little bit lower, or December 2023, a little bit lower peak. But that's not the trend, because look here, in December, or in, in 2024, December, 36,650, actually 38, 42,000, 752. That's the highest peak. So what you're seeing is this trend going up across the board. This is how I suspect it's going to be looking year on year in terms of what Gert is talking about. What you have to realize is that the symptoms of COVID now are mild and people mistakenly believe that because the symptoms are mild, it's a nothing burger. I tend to look at uh, COVID more like I'd look at HIV in the sense that the initial infection with HIV is very mild. It's a mild flu-like illness. It does not mean HIV is a mild infection. It destroys your immune system. COVID does a very similar thing. It literally takes out very important immune cells, natural killer cells, T cells, regulatory cells. And this is what Gert is talking about. Over and over again, being hit with this virus, wiping out the immune system. What he is talking about is what seems to be left because the immune system, especially in the vaccinated cohorts, has become so focused and exhausted that all it has left is cytokine responses. 
and so it will produce interferon, it will do whatever it can to fight off the virus. I'm going to say something now that is pretty serious. I don't know how else to say this other than to be very honest. I am coming to the conclusion that ongoing circulation of this virus is not sustainable. It is putting everything at risk. So whether you are vaccinated, unvaccinated, have good mucosal immunity, if this virus keeps on circulating, it's a matter of time before it starts to take out everyone. So we have a situation now that in my view is untenable. It represents in my thinking like a cancer within the population. If nothing is done, it's going to destroy everything. I can't genuinely think of any easy way that this is going to be stopped other than the people who continue to get infected are no longer able to circulate it. You have to read between the lines of that because what I'm saying is that we are not just putting whole populations at risk. Animals are getting infected. This could become an ecological disaster because this virus is that lethal. And for, for people who forget, we have never seen a virus like this before. Some people think it just randomly appeared in a bat cave and got infected into a few animals and then spread. Sadly, I'm a little bit more conspiratorial and I am not sure if it is possible for this to have been random. With that in mind, if that is correct, just so in case the censors are watching, if that is correct, that this was created you are dealing with something that will never stop. The only way to stop it is if people who are literally the factories for it stop circulating it. And there seems to be no move to try broad population antivirals, things that rhyme with pectin, that has been excluded there doesn't seem to be any interest to try anything at all. And I therefore think when I reflect carefully on it, when we look at the fact that a Hivikron, as I said, coming back to what Gert is saying, he was highlighting that in those individuals whose cell-mediated immune response got sidelined, because of antibody enhancement of infection and subsequently experienced adaptive immune refocusing and dysregulation through repeated breakthrough infections. As seen in many COVID-19 vaccinees, essentially their immune system has failed. Their cell-mediated immunity has failed. Their hum humoral immunity has failed. The only one final line of immune defense is the cytokine antiviral cytokines and what he is saying is that when that is evaded there is nothing left the two parts to this because one will mean that they can't stop the circulation because they won't be mounting a response and this is why i said that i believe we are at the most serious point of the pandemic because i'm telling you this is not a question. This is me just sharing with you by being as, as clear as I can. This virus is still circulating. And believe me, you would have limited idea that someone is infected because the symptoms appear so mild. Literally, all people have is a bit of fatigue, sometimes a bit of a headache. 
they barely have a cough and they're positive. And then what is happening is that the virus is circulating systemically in the bloodstream because they can't seem to control it. And it is at that point that it's taking out the immune system and therefore making them vulnerable to multiple other infections. That's how I think this is going to present. When I go back to the Japanese data and I look at it, my anticipation is that the peak for 2025 December, if it's here at the moment at 42,300, based on this trajectory, it's going to be over 45,000. The year after that, maybe 48. The year after that, it may be 52. And this will not stop because the virus is still circulating. What else can we say? Again, I hope Gert is wrong. I hope my instinct is wrong. Because based on these numbers, we are going to face a tsunami of deaths over the next few years. This is not going to happen suddenly. It's just going to creep. Just like the waves coming in when the tide is washing back. If you are not aware, before you know it, the tide will have you covered. This is where we are at. So my final point to you then is based on that, you need to educate people in whatever way you can. One of them is by taking this concept of humming heroes, where it's a complex medical topic about nitric oxide one of the few lines of defense that your body has, which is antibacterial, antiviral, and it protects blood vessels. It can't do it on its own, but we are at a stage now where every little bit that we can do will help to make things better. As I said, continue to join us in this journey of science. Support the work. Well, I think I'd just gone. As I said, we look forward to continuing with this work in the next few weeks.